All right, there we go again. As I've mentioned before, I'm gonna mention these two things at the beginning of every video. Number one, my grandfather was a Scottish Rite York member. All the books that you will see in our videos are from my grandfather's collection of masonry books, which he never cracked open. Only I cracked them open and actually read them. Number two, uh, we were told by a mason that everything in these books are allegory. So, um, and that a mason learns about masonry through another mason. So, we're making these videos because we want to ask masons, if we read something, what's the allegory? What, you know, what does this mean? What does this, you know, in, as you like to say, enlighten us enlighten us so here we got a one of my grandfather's um, mason bibles this is a holy bible masonic edition masonic edition masonic edition so this time we are going to under the tradition of solomon let me zoom in here hold on Tradition of Solomon. All right, here it goes. It was natural that imaginative stonemasons, long before the development of anything like our modern fraternity, should have felt a kinship with the great builders of all ages. It was natural also that they should have acknowledged a peculiar attraction for the most famous and glorious of all building enterprises, King Solomon's Temple and Citadel. Interest and attraction for the wonderful structure on Mount Moriah have increased rather than diminished during the 600 and more years of recorded Masonic history. Until today, the Temple of Solomon is the spiritual home of every Mason. I think that's interesting. It doesn't say the Temple of God is the spiritual home of every Mason, even though they claim to believe in and follow God. It says the Temple of Solomon is the spiritual home of every Mason. And so I wanted to read this to you from the scripture. And I'll put it right here. Where is it at so I know it's where it is? It's right in. here. Right, where's your finger? Right here. Right here. This is 1 Kings 11, 4 through 8. I'm going to read. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father." Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So, my point in reading that is that when the Masons say that the temple of Solomon is the spiritual home of every Mason, what temple are they talking about? since he built many temples for all these gods. And I find it interesting because when you look in masonry, they have a lot of Egyptian mysticism, that they, Egyptian imagery that is involved in their religion. And these temples that Solomon built for these other gods, as the Bible proclaims, have that same type of imagery in it. So... The question is, since they don't say the temple of God is the spiritual home of every mason, they say the temple of Solomon, and we know that Solomon built temples to many gods, and we know that masons use Egyptian symbolism, are they really saying that the spiritual home of every mason is these temples that Solomon built to these other gods. So, all right, Masons, comment below. Tell us what this allegory means.